Wild day today in the stock market. You see the gap up on the news that SIVB found the buyer. You're going to want to watch this level down here and watch that gap fill and see how the, we acted when we got near it. But as the day progressed, it became very, very clear that there was one thing that was going on that was really holding the market back. That is the rest of the banking sector and what's going on there. Now, there are two things that happened today that have not happened in a very long period of time. One is the bond VIX in comparison to the VIX that we all know and have used in the past. Why technology is outperforming the index at about a 20 year high. We're going to review why that's taking place right now. Why First Citizens is up over 50% on the day. Hey everybody. So we have a lot to go over tonight in a very short period of time. So we're going to jump right into it. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click all notifications. What we go over here is timely. If you're interested in actionable charts, actionable ideas, you have found your spot. Now, see these little levels I'm marking off right here? These are battlegrounds. And we're going to use the S&P just to start. So we're going to just drill in here and look at these levels that we've drawn. And we're going to see, okay, well, we're kind of bouncing around in here, right? But one of the key things that we're doing in the S&P that I think is really worth noting is we're not executing the way we're supposed to be executing. In other words, if you have a long-legged doji, more times than not, if you know anything about long-legged dojis, they go in the direction of that move. Well, we have cracked here. We did not go that way. Should the long-legged doji negate, the next bar should push us higher. That didn't happen either. You have a bearish engulfing right here. Then we broke down and we still didn't go lower. So pattern after pattern is just very simply being negated. And I think it has to do with confusion. Now, there's some really glaring signs here that we're gonna go over, but it's important to just deal with the basics. Number one, you are above your 200 day moving average. That's a fact. Number two, if we look at this and drill into it, you can all see real clear these higher lows and they're everywhere and we can all see them. So I think that that's a really important distinction. So you can see them all, right? You're trying to make that higher high and you're still putting in that lower base right here. But the move index, which we're gonna get into in a moment here, we really have to look at this and say, well, why are we doing this? And what the heck is actually moving in the index? Well, there's certain parts that are just absolutely breaking out. Tomorrow night, I'm going to go through a lot of different comparisons and macro themes. Tonight, I want to be actionable because of what I see going in the market. And I think there's some things that are developing tomorrow that you need to be aware of. So I really want to stay fo focused on actionable ideas and I want to stay focused on the chart so that you have your levels ready. What is in front of you is the XLK divided by the SPY. This is relative performance of the technology sector which is Apple, Microsoft, et cetera, et cetera, relative to the SPY's performance. Now, if you look at this from going back to 2020 to now, you now very clearly have a triple bottom. How do you know you have a triple bottom? See this higher high? You have broken that higher high, and now here you are, and you made a higher high. So the relative performance is in. What you're trying to do is see if you're going to break over this level. Now, if we look at this over, 20 years, just so you understand where we are historically and the outperformance of the S&P, look at where you're at. You're still sitting right here. So this is a massive, massive spot that we must watch and we have to see how it acts here. There is no guarantee that technology is going to continue to move here. A matter of fact, you could have an argument being made that earnings are going to come down because tight, tighter banking regulations are going to constrict the economy, right? There's an argument for that. So we need to understand where we are. And this was the highest relative peak on record. This It's right here. And you're running right into the breakdown bars high right along there. So we need to watch that. But at the same time, we also have to realize that we're looking at a 20 year trend and why things are the same. Sometimes they are also different. And what I mean by that is the same issues you had back then you don't have now, right? Very different times from the issue standpoint, right? So I don't know that you can use that as a comparison, but I do think it's worth noting technically that it's there and that may be an issue. So watch how we act when we get up to this range, but this is very clearly telling you where the money is going and what sector to be involved in. Now, everybody continues to watch the financials and I think that that's very important and we're gonna go over them as well. This is your 200 week moving average and you have closed below it now two weeks in a row. 
When was the last time that that happened was the pandemic. Until then, you've not had two weekly closes below this level. That's significant, we have to watch it. They made our lives very easy because they gave us this long-legged doji sitting right in here. So all we're gonna wanna do is just see how that plays out. And what you're seeing is a battle, and I'll show you why we are seeing a battle. So you have that range right in there, and you can see that if we just stayed here, you'd have another close under that level, right? And you just wanna be aware of that because you definitely do not wanna be closing under that level. now you are still holding major support, and that's very important, right? Of course, you wanna hold major support, and you can see that real clear right here. Let's just zoom into what the great financial crisis back here in 08, and you can see that level and how resistance, resistance becomes support. But that still has us in that weekly range, and obviously, we're not trading for months right now, we're trading for weeks. But I think you'd be remiss in not understanding the significance of this line and why this line in the sand must be held. I also think besides the pandemic, it's worth noting that the only time that you have closed below this level was here. So you do not want to close below this level. This is not something that we want to see have happen. Now for some good news. You have FC and CA. I'm going to drop this in with the volume profile so you can see this real clear. And what I like about this is you're already over and you're, you're already hitting higher highs. Now, why this is significant to me as an equity trader is they are rewarding First Citizens Bank share for being prudent with their balance sheet, getting FDIC approval to buy assets and liabilities and i.e. loans and deposits from SIVB. That's important. There's only one other bank that has been able to do this, and that is NYC. B. And this is one that I have a position in. And frankly, you'll see my little note here for the newsletter. If you do not get the newsletter, I strongly suggest that you get it. Link in description. So we're going to pop the RSI in here real quick. And what we want to focus on is this RSI. If you go and take a look at all the different regional banks that are out there, whether it's FRC or it really doesn't matter which one that you're looking at, they're not even remotely close to where you're at. And I think that's pretty important. Now you can see what happened here with FCNCA, and it's really hard to, uh, you know, as I was saying, straight up is not a pattern. Uh, it's not a pattern until it is, right? But you can see that today and how happy everybody was. Uh, I guess if you're short that, you're kind of stuck. So of course you're gonna have to cover and get out of the way. I like this one because it's just hanging in there. And this is the only one of two now that you have FDIC. Comment below if you know of another bank that's been allowed to buy assets right now, because I'm sure they may be out there and I might not know of it. So if there's another bank that's been able to, please comment on it below. But these are the only two publicly traded ones that I'm aware of. And I like how we're just bouncing right up here and just sitting here and developing. and. Now, at the same time, that level is a 200-day moving average. That's a 90. Make sure this one's the right one at the 200. So we're sitting right at that level. Let's get rid of the 9 for a moment. And we're not able to break it, but I really don't care. I'm at point of control, and I'm just sitting there. The larger issue that I see for financials, before we get into some of the more pertinent things, is FRC. FRC is just the one that nobody wants to take to the dance for whatever reason. They don't want to merge with it. They don't want to buy its assets. They don't want to support it. And it's starting to become concerning. Now, let's zoom in on this because this gets pretty technical. And what I'm about to explain is definitely worth paying attention to. So there are very specific times that I will use Anchored VWAP. Usually it is a news-driven event. You had a news-driven event today, obviously, with First Citizens buying assets. The good thing about that is that it's showing that there are banks out there that have the ability that were prudent to buy assets. That's a good thing. Right, now, FRC, just FYI, disclosure, I currently have a short position in this, and I've had it now for a couple days, and I added to it on Friday. Now, you see this level right here? That is your VWAP on the day, right? This is the VWAP of the previous day. See how you're getting pinched in here? It's called a VWAP pinch, right? These are your levels right there. Now these levels are dynamic, meaning they're going to change as you bounce around in here. The good news is you only have about a 90 cent spread here. So the way that this breaks, if it breaks and confirms, it's going to make your life as a trader very, very easily. So if I was interested in playing this on the long or the short side, and I had this staring in front of me, your job tomorrow got a lot easier. Now you can always have news, 
But I think it's really important to point out, and Morgan Stanley even had a great note on this, they are borrowing more money from the discount window than anyone else. The discount window is where you go to borrow if you're a bank, if no one else will lend you money. If other banks really don't wanna lend you money, you go to the discount window, okay? That's the way to think of it. So this is what we're seeing. This is not ideal. This should, should not make everybody feel like great about the position. Uh, you gap to 16, you closed at 1385. Remember these two levels, 1440 and 1350, if you're looking to trade this tomorrow. Now for a fact, I'm gonna leave this up as a daily just so you get it. If things were so great and all of a sudden the, the liquidity are going to fix their problems, wouldn't you expect some kind of bounce to maybe even the range it was just at? Instead, we're still at 13, trying to not hit a new low and closing at lows of the day. So there's definitely something here that's going to be an issue. I don't know how they're going to resolve it, but the longer that they drag it out, the longer the bond market's going to be dragged out. Now, Deutsche Bank is worth mentioning. You have several banks coming out and telling you, do not worry. Well, when you tell me not to worry, I worry. And the one thing that I would say to you, besides the do not worry crowd, is why would some of the largest investment banks in the world feel necessary to say that they are still currently trading with the company? If there's nothing to worry about, you would never even make a statement. You would just keep trading. But to come out and make that statement and to make it, and actually Goldman on Friday said, we're trading with them today, was their exact wording. So that means it's suspect. I'm not really sure what's going on here. The only thing that I can say is go watch Saturday's video. I talk about the CDSs in there and we have a lot to go over, so I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it tonight. CDSs are bond insurance. What you need to know about this is that bond insurance did not really subside today. So equity, yeah, great. You wanted to come in here, you wanted to cover your short, and I get that, right? I'm not knocking that. What I'm saying is, why aren't we watching the CDSs plummet? Why, aren't, why isn't the insurance plummeting if this is okay? Why isn't FRC rallying to something, to some semblance of a level? It's not. So this tells me that we have issues out there that they need to be resolved. And I think that's one of the reasons why you had such light volume across the board in the indexes today. There's another reason as well. This is MOVE. And you will see this as the Bond Market Option Volatility Estimate Index. Think of the VIX for bonds. This is if you're buying protection, this is going to go higher. Let's just think about it like that. And I think that'll, that'll answer a lot of questions for what's really going on here. If you start back in June and then you start moving forward, you see November when they say, hey, we might have to sell bonds, we might have to raise rates. You'd start seeing more and more action. We start selling back down. Look at that peak right there. That kind of coincides exactly with the peak of the stock market. The S&P 500 is right here, and you can see that is our year peak. It's actually like our six-month peak, so that's kind of interesting that the trough in this, and when people were more comfortable with bonds, and then they started getting uncomfortable, that that actually marked the high of the S&P. We could also note how that when we were hitting highs here, that really was marking the low. So why is that happening and what, what does the S&P have to do with it? Well, frankly, the S&P doesn't have much to do with it at all, except it just has to do with per unit of risk and how much money they want to allocate to the index, which could, we could do a whole video on. But what we're gonna do is just focus on this, right? We're just gonna look at this and go, this is going straight up, right? We all agree on that. Now, in front of us is MOVE, which is the bond market option volatility index. And we know that that is dealing with put protection, best way to explain it in regards to volatility. Think of this almost as a volatility index for when you keep hearing CDS over and over again, right? Just think about it as protection. That's, that's a much better way of wrapping our, your head around it instead of really spending a lot of time on it. But in relation to the VIX, the VIX is equity. So they're worried about bonds, but they're not worried about stocks. It makes no sense whatsoever. It literally makes zero sense. If you're worried about bonds going under or you need bond protection, but you think bonds are gonna have problems, but the equities are gonna just be fine. So we have a massive disconnect. And there's a saying, an old trader saying in the market where the bond market always knows. And I think this is one of the key reasons, listen to the words think, and you know how much trouble that always gets us in. But 
when you look at this, I think that the reason you have light volume right now is we're waiting for some kind of news. People are expecting something. And I understand that people think that maybe he's going to raise rates again. That is not the reason that we are rallying like this. And I'm going to be real clear about this move. So if you go from the February low to where you are now, just to put this in perspective, okay, that is not a small move. It's a 105% move off of this bottom. It's not tiny. That's something to pay attention to. Now, I said earlier that one mimics the other because if bonds are doing bad, then equities are going to do bad, right? And we know that they want protection for one, they're gonna want protection for the other. Well, we can go back to about 20 years and look at this. And if I put this very close together, meaning if I scrunch it up like this, you can see the overlays pretty clearly. And of course, some are gonna be accentuated. Some are not gonna be accentuated. This was the pandemic. So obviously you're gonna have some kind of outlier. But if you start looking at monumental events, you can see how this acts. Now, if I'm to look at this and then I zoom in on what's going on in this particular section right here, I'm going up and this is going down. So in other words, the bond index is going up. They're buying insurance on bonds, but for the equities, they're like, eh, we're okay. This is a massive disconnect in the market right now. Now, what does this mean? Well, in front of us is the two year. And we walked through this recently and we said that it peaked probably about a couple of weeks ago and you'll start seeing how all this is getting tied in. So we say we peaked here. Now in this market, just to put this in perspective, this is the drop that you've had. You've had a 30% in yield, which means you have a 30% price appreciation, right? Well, it's actually more than that, right? Because as yield drops, you multiply the yield by the number of yield, years. So if you take 30%, your bonds didn't move 30%. Your bonds move closer to 60%. Now put leverage on that, right? So people's portfolios that are at these banks is getting better, but rule of thumb with something like this is someone else is levered and you have the largest short positions out there right now against treasuries that you've ever had in history. We are more short treasuries now than we've ever been as from an institutional standpoint. And this is what you're saying. And this is why you have the market move like this. So you have this huge move to 4%. Now, at the same time, you've had this huge move down in yield and bonds have rallied. You have the Fed funds rate. It is currently at 457. And this is how you know banks and the bond market is distressed. Despite the other chart that we looked at, this all ties together. If you look at this area right in here, you can borrow from the Fed at 457 but if they want you to buy short-term treasuries, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna get 4%. So you're basically losing at this point roughly 60 basis points. Last Friday, it was 75 basis. This spread, the Fed funds being higher than the US two year has happened six times in 40 years. I go through this in the video on Saturday and I will link it at the end so that you can spend more time on it because I really drill into this. When does this happen? Long-term capital, think the technology bubble, think the SNL crisis in 1980. There are examples of when this happened. 2008, the great financial crisis. Those kinds of events are why this happens. Make no bones about it, banks are still distressed. Now, that does not mean there's not gonna be some opportunities out there for some of these other banks. I'm not really sure how this is gonna shape up for F. CNCA, I wish they had a better ticker. ticker. Uh, but if you can see the volume that came in here, that's just all the short covering. And then you had the panic this morning. I'd like to see a statement on from Deutsche Bank saying, here's our entire balance sheet, this is the issue. And that way we can get this out in the open. I don't think we're gonna get that. I think we're gonna get the, oh, we don't know why, we don't know why this is happening, which seems to be the standard level. Uh, you know, like they're just shocked that their stock is getting hammered and they have no idea. So you can see this level right here and how this is playing out, right? Now you're up on this level. So I like this bank on maybe pullbacks, any bank like NYCB where they are coming out and actually being able to buy the assets you need to focus on. But let's spend a couple minutes here focusing on actual ideas and what's working in this market. Now I'm gonna use NVIDIA as an example and then we're gonna use another one and I wanna go through the, the levels here and exactly what is going on. I'm gonna give you three examples. The first example I'm gonna give you is a trade that we did today in the trading community and I'll show you exactly when we did it. But what why I'm showing this is because I get asked a lot on your comments on to show trades. I did a video where I showed one of my trades or and I was asked to show also an option trade. I'm not so sure I wanna keep showing my 
trades, I think it might be better off showing either things that we're doing in the room uh, so that you can see how it's affecting other people or maybe some of the coaching clients you know, and showing their trades. I, I don't know. I don't know the way to do it and what makes more sense. Um, if you can comment below on that, because that's why I create content based upon what you say. I just don't like those videos all the time where someone's saying, like, look what I did. It just sounds so it just looks so cheesy to me, to be quite, quite honest. Um, and I don't know how what I'm doing is going to help you. But if I can show the things that I'm pointing out to other people and how they're benefiting, I think that's a better way to do it. But I'm interested in your comments, obviously. So you see our level right in here, right? So we know where support is. And this is what you need to focus on. I'm going to link this video at the end. You need to focus on support and resistance lines like they're going out of style. You are in a trader's market. You are not in a retail market. You're not in a market where you're going to see everyone come out and saying, oh, I made a thousand percent this year. Certain people are going to absolutely crush it this year because it's wash, rinse and repeat. And what do I mean by that? Well, this level looks really familiar, doesn't it? So, of course, it's not perfect. But let's go take a look at right where that open is. And ever since that open, you've been holding that open, haven't you? Well, what does that tell you? It tells you that buyer's still there, right? Whoever was buying here that day and was getting all giddy and had to get in, they're still getting giddy, aren't they? There, there you are. Remember, the sky is falling. Everything's going to collapse. We actually bought that day. Anyway, see where you're at on these levels. OK, so you, you take a 15 minute chart and you zoom out. Bear with me. I'm talking fast so I can get through it all. I'm trying to get this the videos timed down for everybody. So you can see right in this level, right, how those levels and how we're defining those levels. Here's my nine. I start getting over. This is my entry. You can see the timestamp right there in the room. And then what we start doing is we start scaling out. Now I get up a dollar and then it happens so fast. I don't really get the opportunity to get out. And it did this really wonky thing today. And we're seeing a lot of this. And this makes me think we don't have the liquidity we think we have. See, there's no volume here. Look at these gaps in this chart, right? You're closing here on one bar and then you're opening here on another and then you're gapping down. Signs of lack of liquidity. So it's not really what you want to see with a name like NVIDIA. You want to see these tight, long green or red bars liquidity. Anyway, if you're looking at this, right? So then we came back down. The stop is just the low. It's that simple. You have your setup, you know where your supports are, you use your trigger, the nine EMA is what I've been using and it's been working exceptionally well, comes back down, makes the higher high, rips, and then you're just scaling out. And that's exactly what we did with the trade. And you'll, you're just seeing it where you can see, all right, we're up a dollar, trim, move stop to break even or low a day, up again, trim, right? And then eventually guess what happens? We get stopped out of the trade. So some people are going to sell right into that and take the two bucks on the whole trade. Doesn't matter how you do it, but at least you're following along. Now you get right to a resistance point and what do you do? You reject. Support and resistance. If you're using support and resistance and you're sticking with leaders, that's what's working. You can look at this all you want. You can look at this chart all you want and you can look at these levels, okay? And look at them and see how this is going on. You're not going anywhere, but you are going somewhere. In other words, you were looking at this daily bar and you're going, well, we didn't really go anywhere. Well, we had an $8 move today, right? So there was money to be made there, even on the long side, even though it's a red day. As we try to figure out, is this going to you know, break? Look, I would like just as much as the next guy to get back to that's buy and hold, and we're gonna hold for weeks, and we're gonna trade, and we're gonna to add to it. But as I stated earlier in this video, this is a trader's market. It's why I'm taking the time to explain this. I wanna give you two other examples that are similar, but not exact. This is Netflix. Now, I had one trade earlier in the day that we did, that we did quite well with, and I also have a swing trade that I'm leaving alone. I like the trade, we'll see how it goes. But on the day side, up in, did well, there's your reversal, bearish engulfing, then you undercut. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on there. And that was enough to trim into that and for day traders to just get the heck out of the way. And we did quite well there, but nevertheless, comes back down, retests. The purpose of me showing you this is, this is exactly what's happening to everyone. See this level right here? They're using this as their stop. All they're doing is stopping you out. They're walking you down after they lure you in with the one, two, three bar pattern that you're waiting for, right? After they lure you in and breaking up over a higher high, they then come down low. They get liquidity by getting everybody stop and then they run it up, 
right? So what they're doing is they're trying to collect everything they can here and then they push it higher. So you can see right here, we enter at 141, right? So we're entering at 141. So what exactly is happening there? Well, what's happening is this is that major support line that we just talked about. They took you down here and they flushed everybody out. You can see the panic right here. If you zoom in on this and you look at that volume, right? So you can see these huge volume right there, right? So they're getting everybody's supply. They get rid of it. They have zero buying down here. Then they lift you back up. And then all we're doing is scaling out on the way up of the trade. And our risk is really the lower low. That's your entire risk on the trade. But then when you start moving along, you can see very clearly here, this huge bar, and then you know it's go time. And it became pretty clear there. I think it was 326 is where we entered and then uh, up a dollar 50 trim up two trim move stop to break even constantly protecting capital and then we got up to three bucks on a very simple day trade this is working over and over and over again now tesla if we take a look at tesla and we can see up here that dtl downward trend line and we should all remember where this one is but we went over this on saturday but those that are here let's just look at what we're looking at right so there's that dtl downward trend line and you can see how that sits support and resistance so we know where our dtl is we know where our issue is now this is a completely different kind of trade but what is happening is you can see up here is that dtl we were talking about now if you come here you're seeing tesla what does tesla do it gap fills so if you look at your names and go look through your own charts on names that you traded today and go look at how many gap filled and then tested and then had a reversal, there's your nine, flips the nine, boom, and then it took off. The problem with most people is that you're not having patience to wait for these. So I'll give you a really quick example of this. 1243 Tesla gap fill, right? So here's the gap fill, 1243. No signal, nothing, but there's the gap fill, right? So then we just start walking through it and watch it. And we're just looking at it, Tesla bounced off gap fill. And then you just kind of get to it. You can see it here very, very clearly, right? The gap fill we mentioned earlier, blah, blah, blah. The purpose I'm saying for this is whether or not you did this trade or whether or not you did another trade today, you need to stalk your trades right now. Okay, the days of I got to buy off the open, that's not what's working. You have to almost fade the exact open from 9.30 to 10, but I can do a whole other video on that. So this was a little different today. I want to give examples of actionable things that we did today because you are in a trading environment, okay? You are in a trading environment. And if you're not going to be in a trading environment or you don't want to be in a trading environment, this market's not for you. So this market is not for retail, especially until they figure out what's going on with the two-year two Fed funds and we can figure out what the heck's going on with the move index. If you found this helpful, please comment on this video. It's much longer than I wanted it to be tonight, but there was a lot of information in there and I didn't really want to split it into two. Have a good night, everyone.